Here's a Beyond the Pitch podcast quick hit from the WVSA Digital Network. First of all, coaches have got to plan the vocab. So what language are they using? And and don't assume that the players understand what we're saying. Even though they might nod and they give us that yes, we can't assume. So for coaches listening, it's how can you check for understanding? And one of the first things I always say to people is feedback given isn't necessarily feedback received and understood. So it's really important when we're giving feedback or we're asking a question, make sure that the player understands, but also we're not necessarily imposing our perception upon the player or giving them our answer. Even in a guided question, it can be quite a closed question, depending on how you structure it. So there's a clear right and wrong answer. And it's really important that for players, we're going on a journey with them. So we're not necessarily imposing our belief on what the solution is, but it's more developing the curiosity in the player. So how can we inspire and involve the player in coming up with their own solution? So you might ask them a question that sets them a challenge. So it might be similar to the examples I gave before, or even, you know, how can your action eliminate two or more defenders? So, or it might be, if you want to be really specific, you might say, how can your pass eliminate two or more defenders? Now, I'm not saying when to pass or how to pass. They'll decide the choice. They might decide, you know what? It's a great opportunity to do something a bit like an Ozil where I clip in, it bounces over, or a Kevin De Bruyne and I do something clever with a flick. Or it might be, a, you know, an unorthodox pass. It might be a disguise pass. So how can you disguise and deceive? So what you're doing is you're setting them a challenge and for the players, they're going to look for the right time and they're going to interact and experiment and explore and that freedom like you mentioned so that they know when the right time is and when, when it isn't the right time. So you're not giving them an answer. They can look, oh, how can I eliminate two or more defenders? Well, there's a gap here. I can break a line for that pass there. Or I might dribble and drive into the space. You know, So dribble when you can, pass when you must. So if you need to pass, release the ball, combine with players. But if you can drive into space, hurt a player. Or if you have to manipulate the ball in order to create the passing opportunity, the passing lane, do that. Stay on the ball for as long as possible. So for coaches, it's not about giving them answers. It's about being really clever in how you structure your sentence or your question and, and trying to tap into the perception of the player. So what I mean by that is the examples I gave there where you're asking them what did they see in that moment. So where's how, how can you see both goals before you receive the ball? So straight away, they're going to open the body shape. So I'm not telling them to open the body shape. They're going to do that naturally. Or it might be, why is it important for you to see where, where Marcus is before you receive the ball? What will that allow you to do? Allow me to think about when the ball needs to go next. Like, they'll tell you the answers. I can adjust my body. I notice the defender's coming here, so maybe I'll have to take my touch in here. So straight away, you're, you're getting the clarity. Because for coaches, whenever we're giving feedback, it's so important that players have choice, but more important than all, they have clarity. They need to know why. What's the relevance and why? Otherwise, the opposite of that would be we just tell them the answer. We just give them direct instruction and say, go here, pass there, do this, do that. A bit like joystick or PlayStation, you know, soccer. For the player, he'll go, okay, coach, you know, you told me to spread out. You told me to create width. I'll do it. I don't know why I'm doing it, but I'll do it because you're the coach. And that's low-level thinking skills. And what will happen is when, when players are faced with a problem that they've never faced before, they've never seen, which will happen for sure, because the game is random, it's chaotic. No situation is the same. If they don't know what to do and they're not encouraged to become more game responsive, who's the first person they're going to look to? It's going to be the coach on the bench because they're going to go, what do I do now? I don't know. And they're always going to be dependent upon your feedback. I think the role of the coach is to develop players to become more game responsive. We want to create self-learners. We don't want them to become dependent upon us and always looking to us for the answer. We shouldn't be the oracle of, of all knowledge, when actually all the information they need is right in front of them. It's in the environment. So, and especially as the game is becoming more complex, more creative, it's requiring more uh, decision-making skills and problem solving. And as I mentioned before, there's a premium value now on disguise and deception. So if we know that, we've got to create environments and 
and use feedback in such a way that guides the players on where to look and, and how to solve the problem themselves, doesn't tell them where to look or how to move or what to do.